So I just got finished reading the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, and I have to say that I officially get the hype. I now know why so many people love this book and why it's so well received and so well respected. And so in this video, I wanna share with you guys six mind-blowing lessons that I took away from the book Atomic Habits. This video is sponsored by Shortform, but more on them later. Lesson number one is that goals don't matter, but systems do. Often when we're trying to form a new habit or we're trying to achieve a goal, we tend to fixate on the finish line. We tend to fixate on what the specific outcome is that we want, but we don't ever think about how we're actually gonna get there. Let's say for example, you wanna save $5,000 this year. That's a great goal to have, but simply having that goal isn't enough to actually make it happen. What you really need is a system, basically an actionable plan that's gonna help you not only save $5,000, but get into the habit of being somebody who actively saves money overall. So that might mean that you take $5,000, divide it up over 12 months, and you realize that it's a little over $400 a month. Okay, fine, now how are we gonna save $400 a month? Maybe that means that from every bi-weekly paycheck you get, $200 gets automatically deducted and put into your savings account. Now we have an actionable goal. We have a system in place that's gonna help us to reach that goal of $5,000 this year. But more importantly, you're gonna get into a habit of simply taking $200 from every paycheck and setting it aside. And if you can do that consistently, you're gonna become somebody who is in the habit of saving money. And $5,000 will be just scratching the surface of what you can actually accomplish in the long run. Setting big lofty goals is perfectly fine, but far more important than that is creating systems and building consistent habits that allow those goals to actually be attainable to you. My goodness, what an idea. Why didn't I think of that? The second mind-blowing lesson that I learned from Atomic Habits is one that actually makes perfect sense when you think about it, but I guess I just never thought about it, and it's that avoidance habits are not reinforcing. What that means is that if the habit you're trying to form is one of avoiding doing something you've otherwise been doing, such as avoiding buying coffee out, or maybe avoiding smoking, or avoiding oversleeping, your brain is not wired to find that reinforcing and enjoyable, and therefore you're not likely to have long-term success. If every morning you leave for work and you have to remind yourself, don't go through the drive-through, don't go through the drive-through, don't go through the drive-through, you might succeed for a number of days, even a number of weeks, but overall you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to not do this thing that is so habitual to you and something that you probably actually get short-term gratification from, in this case, coffee or whatever else it may be. Instead, you wanna reframe it rather than I'm not gonna do this, I am gonna do this other thing that prevents me from doing that first thing. So rather than I'm not gonna buy coffee out, the habit you wanna build is not avoiding buying coffee out, but rather making coffee at home. You're gonna actively make your coffee at home. If you make a coffee at home and you bring it with you, you no longer have the need or the desire to hit the drive-through. Rather than telling yourself that you're not gonna oversleep in the morning, form a positive habit such as I'm gonna wake up early and make my favorite breakfast, or I'm gonna to go to bed earlier so that I can get up earlier. So rather than a habit of avoidance, you're building a habit of action. Yes, science! One of the habits that I personally have been trying to work on for a little while now is being more conscious of my content consumption. I personally find it just way too easy to fall into a late night YouTube rabbit hole, watching music videos from old crappy 2000s pop punk bands. And it's not necessarily the best use of my time, but does anybody remember the band Gob? I don't know if they were known outside of Canada, but shout out to Gob. Point being, it would be very difficult for me in the long run to maintain an avoidant habit of simply not doing that. So what I'm doing instead of building a habit of avoidance is trying to build an actionable positive habit. So instead of just binging like Good Charlotte videos or something, I've created an actionable habit for myself where I allocate 20 to 30 minutes every evening to learning and reading about things that are actually gonna help propel me forward in life. And one of the absolute best tools that I found to help me do that is today's sponsor, Shortform. Shortform makes the world's best guides to pretty much every nonfiction book you could ever hope for. Whether you're looking to learn about money and investing, self-improvement, productivity, or virtually anything else, Shortform has thousands of books available that have been condensed down to make them faster and easier to read, giving you all the key points right at your fingertips. You might even be able to say it's all killer, no filler. Okay, I promise that's the last pop punk reference for now. You can also listen to them as audiobooks, which I personally love to do while I'm driving. New books are added every single week and members get to vote on which ones come next. So for roughly the price of one book a month, you're getting access to their entire library, which is an absolute no brainer if you ask me. If you'd like to check out Atomic Habits or any other nonfiction books, you can get a free trial plus 20% off your annual membership at shortform.com slash according to Nicole or click the link in the description box below. Lesson number three that I've learned from Atomic Habits is one that I've actually utilized in my life in the past, but I always find it very interesting to hear how other people have put it into action. And it's that identity is everything. When we're first trying to form new habits, it can be very easy to stumble and to trip and to make mistakes and to backpedal or to fall off the wagon entirely. 
And when you do, it can be very difficult to find the motivation to get up and start again. But rather than looking at your new habits as a task or a chore or a difficult thing you have to accomplish, look at it as a part of your identity, as a part of who you are. If you're trying to quit smoking, rather than telling people, yeah, well, I'm trying to quit smoking, start identifying as a non-smoker. If you're a non-smoker and you see yourself as a non-smoker and you tell everybody else you're a non-smoker, you can't be smoking. This is something that I personally did about six, seven years ago when I first went vegan. I'd been vegetarian for a long time and I wanted to be vegan. I meant to be vegan. I intended to go vegan, but I just found it too easy to kind of stay in the habit that I had been in before and just keep eating the same things I had been eating. So rather than looking at myself as somebody who was going to be a future vegan one day or who wanted to be vegan or telling other people that that was the goal that I had, I just started identifying as a vegan. And if I'm a vegan, then I don't eat dairy and I don't eat eggs and I just don't do these things. <laughs> I'm a level five vegan. I won't eat anything that casts a shadow. Wow. If the goal you're trying to set is to keep your house more organized and cleaner, rather than looking at it as a set of tasks that you have to keep on top of perpetually, look at it as part of your identity. If you're somebody who is a clean freak, if you're somebody who values hygiene and organization, that's who you are. It's not a task, it's just what you do. And it's what you do to sustain the person that you are. For me personally, I found that not only is this an effective tactic to maintain the habits and routines that you want to maintain, but it actually helps to give you a sense of pride and a sense of ownership over the things that are important to you in life. And that alone helps to motivate you far more than anything ever will. Lesson number four is one that I had just never really thought about before, but it's actually really straightforward and simple. When you think about it, it makes perfect sense. And that's that habits are just solutions to your problems. If you were to walk into my kitchen and see everything clean and tidy and organized, you might assume that I put in a lot of effort to keep things that way and that it's a big task and a big chore that I have to maintain. But the truth is, the reason I do that is because it's a solution to a problem that I had. That problem is waking up in the morning, coming into the kitchen and finding a mess, which puts me in a terrible mood. There's nothing grosser to me than coming downstairs to a sink full of dirty dishes or food slathered across the counter from last night. That makes me so grumpy and so miserable and it's such an easy thing to avoid if I just keep things organized. So it's not so much that I'm obsessed with cleaning my kitchen, but more so that keeping my kitchen clean is a solution to a problem I had, which is that having a dirty kitchen puts me in a bad mood. Another routine that I follow that has become a habit for me is washing down the outside backyard fence once a week. And that might seem like a weird thing to do, but where I live, we deal with a lot of spiders. And I'm not sure if I've ever said this before on the channel, but I am terrified, absolutely petrified of spiders, actually of all bugs, but spiders in particular. And so if I neglect my backyard, I can go outside and find spider webs all over the place and these big, monstrous, ugly, disgusting spiders spin these nasty, like, I've never seen webs like this before. They're like cyclones. It's like an upside down pylon. There's like a hole. And then if you spray water in it, you'll see this like tarantula. Anyways, I've gotten into the habit of going outside once a week and I take the hose and I rinse down all the spider webs. And by doing that, I'm able to find a solution to my problem. I no longer feel like shitting myself in fear every time I go in my backyard. So win-win all around. If there's a habit you're trying to form, chances are very likely that that habit is actually a solution to a problem you're experiencing. So ask yourself what the problem is that you're experiencing, ask yourself what the solution is, and all of a sudden the habit becomes a lot more achievable. Number five is that motion is not action. I've referenced something before that I've called the false first step. I actually got that phrase from another YouTuber called Break the Twitch. The guy's name is Anthony. You can check out his channel. I'll link to it below. But essentially it's when you're trying to form a new routine, a new habit, you're trying to achieve a goal and you make yourself busy with things that are not really getting you any closer to that goal, even if it seems topically like it might be. If you wanted to start working out, you might find yourself researching the various gyms in your area or looking at new running shoes or even going out and purchasing some new workout clothing. And all of those things might make you feel like you're taking actionable steps towards your goal, but you're not. Those steps are motion. They're not action. You're doing something, but none of those things directly lead to the goal that you're working towards. Buying new workout clothes, researching gyms, none of those things actually lead to you going and moving your body and doing the workout you want to do. If you've spent the last week researching or reading reviews or shopping for gear or whatever else, none of that actually involves you starting to work out. You could have spent that time going for a walk, going for a run, lifting a weight, doing something other than just preparing for the action. Don't confuse motion with action because they're not the same thing. And finally, lesson number six that I took away from Atomic Habits is a really interesting one and one that I had never thought about before, but actually makes perfect sense. And it's that boredom is a sign of success. 
Our brains are hardwired to be addicted to dopamine. We want that hit, we want that rush, we want that excitement, we want that achievement. Going back to that goal of saving money, the very first time you transfer $100 from your paycheck into your savings account, you feel on top of the world. You're like, look at me, I did it. And then the second time you're like, hey, look, I'm being consistent, how amazing am I? And then the third time and the fourth time and the fifth time, you feel so proud of yourself. But by the 10th or 20th or 50th time that you've done that, it's now just a habit, it's just a practice, it's a routine, and you don't get that same dopamine rush, it's not as exciting to you, and it's not as rewarding to your brain because it's something that is no longer new and novel. But to be honest with you, that's a good thing because that means you've succeeded in cementing this habit into your life. And while it may not excite you anymore, it's become easy for you to do it. And what really matters is that it's easy so you're gonna continue to do it. But this could also be looked at as an opportunity for you to push the goal line a little bit. If saving $100 doesn't get you all excited anymore, it's probably a good thing. Maybe try saving 150 and think about how accomplished you'll feel if you do. In Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about what's known as the Goldilocks Principle, which basically states that if something is too easy and your brain doesn't find it to be a challenge at all, you're easily likely to give up on it because it's not rewarding, it's not exciting, and you just don't care that much anymore. Whereas if something is too difficult for you, you're also likely to just give up because you feel overwhelmed by the challenge. So the goal is to find that in between, the just right, where it's just on the precipice of what feels approachable to you and helps you to extend yourself just a little bit more. If saving $100 from each paycheck has become boring to you, it's honestly on the whole a pretty good thing, but it doesn't mean you should just give up, nor does it mean you should increase your goal to some unachievable level like $500 from every paycheck because that will likely overwhelm you and you'll quit altogether anyways. By pushing that envelope just a little bit and reaching for let's say $150 from each paycheck, you're gonna give yourself that new invigoration, that new feeling of, hey look, I did it, and it's still gonna be within the realm of your capabilities. Most importantly, you're putting systems in place to become the kind of person you wanna be, the kind of person who saves money, and you're continuing to get that dopamine hit that your brain craves so badly. For me, the idea that boring is a sign of success is a really weird new way for me to look at life, but I think it's a really positive thing that's actually gonna help me. With that said, I'm very curious to know which of these six points is the most interesting to you. So drop me a comment down below and let me know. Or if you have another way of looking at habit change and productivity, I would love to know that as well. So let me know below. If you enjoyed this video at all, please go ahead, hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my uploads. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. You can also check me out on Patreon for more additional content at patreon.com slash according to Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. Take care and I will see you next week.